Hello, and welcome to the first episode of a brand new series that we're going to be beginning, which is a comprehensive uh, build along series where you and I are going to build a game together. So what I mean by that is we're going to start from scratch. We're not going to skip a single step. We're going to do everything that you see here, all of the menus. We're going to design the levels together. We're going to decide some of the uh, some of the puzzles that are going to go into the game and some of the mechanics. Now, one of the great things about this series is that you will have uh, not only a great deal of input in the decision making for the way this game takes shape over the course of the series. In fact, I'm kind of counting on it. I'm hoping that you guys will contribute ideas or contribute assets or whatever you like um, and, and make this our game, not just my game. Uh, but also, if you want, you can build along with me a version of this game of your own and in that way you can make decisions of your own and kind of take it in a different direction if you want to or just make it something unique so you're not stuck with just you know do what i do you can kind of go nuts and do whatever you want um, and in fact along the way since so many people might contribute ideas or things we're not always going to agree right so it could be that i don't you know want to Put in a particular mechanic or like in my case i'm not going to use any uh, monsters creatures of any kind you may want those so don't let me stop you by all means be you know feel free to do what you want to do for your game but still watch the series because i think you know the point of the series is to build a game but also to kind of talk about the process of building a game together and make those decisions and just kind of work together as a team to produce something fun and enjoyable. And that's, that's the whole spirit of the exercise. Okay. If you want to contribute ideas, uh, you would leave comments in the, uh, in the, you know, comment section below. And, uh, I can't promise you that I'll use everybody's idea. I just don't think that's realistic. Uh, we may disagree, like I said, and so I will try. To incorporate as many ideas as I can if they fit the the you know the general idea of what I'm trying to do if they don't it's okay by all means like I said I encourage you to do you know, that for your own version of the game um, if you do contribute an idea if I take on board one of your ideas I will credit you in the final version of this game in addition there's a rule that I've decided to set for myself and that is, I'm only going to be using stock assets that come with Game Guru Max, or in in a pinch, I might go and download a uh, model on like Sketchfab or some other website. And if that's the case, I'll of course mention that along the way and leave a, a link so that you can obtain that same model if you want to use it. Uh, but I'm not going to be using DLCs of any kind, anything that you have to pay for. And the reason is I want this to be as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. People that are coming in uh, brand new and don't maybe just don't have the resources to download all these or to buy all these DLCs because there's actually quite a library that's growing uh, all the time. So I don't want to pressure anybody to spend money on something that they don't they don't necessarily need to. Um, so that doesn't mean that you can't like i said if you know if you want to make a version of this that's something different by all means knock yourself out you know if you have your own artistic style that you want to adhere to or you know whatever whatever you want to do so don't feel like you have to be exactly what i do it's not really the point of this um, but with all that said if you want to contribute an asset and again when i say asset i mean uh, 3D, a piece of 3D art, a piece of 2D art, uh, audio, anything like that, anything that would go into the game. If you contribute a asset of any kind and you allow that asset to be downloadable for free by everyone, then once again, I will credit you in the final version of the game. So hopefully we'll have a nice about screen where we'll have a whole bunch of uh, 
contributors that uh, made this game possible. That's the, that's the idea. Uh, so with all of that out of the way, I thought we'd just talk about the prototype and you've, uh, you, you may have already seen it. Uh, let's take a look. So this is the same level that I used for the flashlight uh, video, flashlight behavior video. Um, so if you haven't watched that, I'll leave a link right here or in the description down below and you can go check that out. But it's basically, um, it's the idea is to make a game with uh, one core mechanic. And then if we need additional mechanics, we can use those different puzzles, different you know, behaviors will come into play, but the core mechanic is the focus of the game. Um, and so in our case, it's the flashlight behavior. So we have our flashlight right here. And the thing about the flashlight is there is a battery level. And if the battery level were to become depleted, then what we can do is say we lose the game. So basically what we're saying here is the battery life is directly tied to the player's life and if the player allows the battery life to deplete to zero the game is over at least the level they may have to restart the level and try again that's the idea um, so they'll be wandering around through the the dark maze that we create for them and trying to figure out solve puzzles like i said there won't be any enemies i'm not going to include guns i'm not going to include monsters i'm just going to do darkness and puzzles and really time time is the enemy you know battery life that's the uh the challenge um in this example i have a puzzle set up where there's a, a switch here on a wall and it's close enough to where if they click this switch this wall panel is going to rise up and they'll hear it from that location um, so hopefully they'll get curious and investigate and if they do that they might just see the wall close because it doesn't stay open for very long so then you gotta race you gotta click the button and then race through the maze to get under that wall in time and if they can do that then that leads them to the staircase and that will eventually take them to the next level the puzzle is rather simple the the uh, the maze is rather simple. All of that is by design because you don't want your first level to be too, too challenging. Really, you're only introducing some core concepts. You're introducing the core mechanic. Um, you're introducing maybe one type of puzzle. Um, and that's about it. You really don't want to over challenge or over complicate your first level. It's an introduction. It's essentially a tutorial because they've got to learn how to play the game. And you don't want to necessarily give them a big description or you know a lot of text in fact the way i chose to introduce the core concept is through story so in my case i have a document here that i made and i can show you how i did this i just opened it up in a program called gimp g-i-m-p um, and found a nice texture and then found a uh, handwriting font and put that in there and i just kind of came up with a little uh, note it says, welcome to your labyrinth prison. So I'm, entered, I'm telling you, you're in a maze. Uh, survive the darkness for if your light fades, so shall you. So your health and your success is tied directly to that flashlight. Uh, find your way out if you dare. So it's a challenge to the uh, player to find their way out. So the player is at the bottom of a labyrinth. And as they progress up the stairs level by level the challenges will become harder the flashlight uh, might have different uh, amounts of battery life left over there might be different uh, you know secrets along the way like for instance i hit a little battery over here so if the player really does have a problem there is a way to to get an extra little bit of battery life uh, before they they die and lose this particular level uh, and then there's some decoration and things, you know, nothing too fancy. Again, I'm, I'm going to limit myself to just stock assets. That does not mean that you have to. It's just a personal challenge of mine. Um, but that's it. That's the whole game is going to be based solely around one behavior. And like I said, we'll introduce some mechanics along the way, some puzzle mechanics. But for the most part, that's the core 
uh, behavior. All right, and then we can just slide the roof back on and we have our level. The only other thing I did here was uh, set all the, the light to pitch black so that there was no light creeping in. Set all this down to absolute zero, absolute black. And we play the game. Here we are in that room again. And I've, got, I've given them some light, as you can see. Uh, but if they open this door, that light goes out and they're now left in complete darkness. You see what I mean? So they really do need this flashlight. And then the game starts. Uh, so that's the concept of the game. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you are ex as excited as I am to get started on the project. But I just want to introduce to you what I had in mind. And hopefully you'll be following along with me. Uh, if you're excited like I am, please be sure to click the like button down below. It helps me out. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next part of this series where we'll actually get started and build this level from scratch. Okay. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.